Hey there, this is Blake back already again. Uh, second video of the day. Managed to get it done. And this video, as you can tell in the title, is really about books. Uh, books about music. Books that I've been reading or have recently finished reading. Um, as you probably know if you've been following me and my channel or if you know me and you can hear me talk about it uh, vocally or through email, I've uh, been reading a lot of stuff about uh, jazz, jazz in the 50s, 60s, 70s, um, really spurred on by my love and um, sincere interest in spiritual jazz and avant-garde jazz and experimental jazz and free jazz and improvisational jazz and uh, post-bebop. I love bebop, but uh, just trying to learn as much as I can about all of those areas of jazz that I was really ignorant about and, and didn't know where to begin. But uh, with the help of a few folks in the VC and Mr. Mike Johnson, I got to make a call out to him, uh, bass player for Northwoods Improvisers, um, who also has a great radio show on W... Oh man, I can't remember the call letters. Uh, I'll try to post it down uh, in the comments here on late Sunday night, Destination Out. Um, anyway, been doing as much reading as I can and uh, I finished a few books recently and I just want to make a comment about them in case others are interested. So, uh, a couple of books ago, uh, Freedom Is, Freedom Ain't, Jazz in the Making of the 60s by Scott Saul. Um, pretty thick little book here, well, pretty thick, big book here. Um, I want to show you the uh, table of contents. Um, the reason why I want to do that is because I think um, this book really feels to me like a collection of essays, like five or six essays that are put together that are somewhat loosely related. Um, but I don't, I don't get the overarching sense of of a complete book here in mind. Um, I mean, maybe it's there, and I'm just missing it um, because I'm not the smartest kid on the block. But anyway, um, part one: a new intellectual vernacular, uh, redefining youth culture. Part two: sound of struggle. Part three: freedom saint. Part four, and then uh, there's uh, one more part. In and out of the whirlwind. So, like I said, uh, this is it's very well written uh, material. Um, probably uh, used in a lot of classes, just in terms of its um, literary um, level. Uh, very what well written stuff. Just more more focused on on not the music itself, but what the music has caused, which is very interesting to me. I, I'm interested in that. Uh, I'm just pointing it out to, to, to you folks um, that there's there's more of an interest on uh, what what this what society was like, what what was going on, and um, it's a very good history in in, in those terms yeah, than actually kind of focusing on the music and the importance of the music or how the music was put together, etc. So. Freedom is freedom main. I, I, I would recommend this to folks who are, are digging uh, jazz in in the in the late 50s, 60s, um, early 70s, and want to know what what a good snapshot of society was like. So this is a, this is a good book for that. Um, so we'll go from there. Um, before that, I, I read I read this um, songs of the unsung. Now, you remember my earlier video about Horace Tapscott um, and Nimbus West, a label. Uh, if you didn't see that, dig back through my videos and find out where you can buy some vinyl uh, from the Nimbus West catalog, uh, straight from Nimbus West. Uh, an exceptional deal, a steal. So go do that if you haven't already. Um, 
Horace Tatscott, so um, if you remember, or, or maybe it's new to you, um, Horace kind of led or, or, or helped coordinate a, a group of people in, uh, in the Central Avenue area of Los Angeles um, and, and basically build a community uh, around music in, in, in LA. Um, very, very great, great story, great, um, great music that's come out of that. In fact, actually what's playing, <laughs> Horse Tap Scott's The Call. Get you one. So, great story there about uh, the music scene and how it all came together with, with Horace's help. Um, but this is Horace's autobiography. I think this was released like right after he died um, in 81, 81 or 2 or something like that. Uh, I, oh, wait a minute. That was terrible. 2001. 81. I don't know where that came from. 2001. Um, so, unfortunately for me, I had already read this first. The Dark Tree by Stephen Isoardi. Uh, Stephen also edited this one. Um, and what Stephen says in the beginning, and, and it will make sense why I'm telling you no, Stephen said that he um, he decided to just leave, leave what Horace wrote alone uh, in terms of keeping it in Horace's voice and Horace's words. The unfortunate problem with that is that it's very thin. I mean, well, I mean, thin in terms of this. This was a this was really a letdown after reading a really, really exceptionally well written book here. If you're going to dig into Horace Tapscott, read this first, and it will be great uh, because you get introduced to. You know, a good biography uh, of his life um, but if you want to save yourself some time you'll get all of that in here um, every bit of it well probably not every bit of it but all of the good stuff is in here and uh, so it, it, I just made a mistake and I read this one I read this one second after this one so songs of the unsung horse tap Scott I mean it's if you want to be a completist, and I, I'm in love with Horace now, so um, of course I had to have it. And I'm a book collector. Yeah. Um, I've already talked a little bit about this, The Dark Tree, since it's already in my hands though. Uh, I highly, highly recommend this if you have any interest in um, seeing a, a great example of a guy that said no to the commercial aspect of, of jazz in, in the late 50s, early 60s, and decided to, to go home and build a community, and that he did. And I think he had to do it a couple of times, maybe three times, um, but uh, great, great story about Horace Tapscott and the, the group that he formed out there, um, the Pan-African uh, Orchestra, and the UGMA and the UGMAA, um, great, great book. I mean, fantastic. Very well written, exceptionally well researched, um, and about a very, very great man. Very inspirational. I mean, I read this and I go, man, I want to do something like this. I mean, I'd love to be able to pull off what what he was able to do in building a community. Um, I just don't have the chops to do it. Derek, you're retired. Read this book. <laughs> Maybe you can build a community in Omaha. Uh, lo I love this book, so highly recommend it. I just finished, two nights ago, a book that wasn't recommended, I just kind of stumbled on it. Remember, uh, I said I went to Charlottesville, and of course, um, there are a lot of really, really good bookstores in Charlottesville, and I found this Clawing at the Limits of Cool, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and the greatest jazz collaboration ever by Jasmine and Washington. Um, 
very, very neat book. Uh, basically, a very quick read. I mean, you know, they take advantage of it being pretty short with the, the typeset and everything. But really, really fun. Basically, uh, a little bit of a, uh, a biography of, of Miles Davis and John Coltrane, and then they they meet each other, right? And and this is about how one influenced the other, and the other influenced the other, and the relationships and the ins and outs about that, and the great music that they that they made together. Uh, we're glaring here. Uh, really, really fun book, and. The interesting thing about this book, or at least something I haven't experienced yet in, in a lot of the, that I read, um, some very good detail about some of the recordings uh, in terms of a very um, deep review on some of the albums, especially uh, one I don't have is Miles Davis's Milestones release. And after reading about it, I mean, a, you know, the pages about it, um, it's, it's floated to the top of my list of something to look for. Um, if you like Miles Davis, if you like John Coltrane, uh, and you appreciate their impact on music, their impact on the society, uh, I mean, these are cultural icons that won't go away for a long time because of we we still are um, discovering what they've done and and what what their impact is on on music not just jazz but music uh, so clawing at the limits of cool highly recommended uh, for you jazz folks now what I'm about to start I can't really tell you that much about it but it's here and I want to show you um, this was recommended to me by Mike Johnston, uh, A Power Stronger Than Itself, The AACM and American Experimental Music uh, by George Lewis. A thick book. I mean, quite intimidating. Um, basically a, a very, very well, uh, very detailed book, uh, written by George Lewis, um, an insider, so he knows what he's talking about. About the AACM, uh, let's, let's uh, da da da, trying to find, trying to find a, a quick blip on the back here, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm interested in learning more about uh, the AACM, the Association for the Advancement of creative musicians, uh, about to say classical, but that's not right, <laughs> creative musicians, um, and that, that whole community that, that kind of grew up around the Chicago area and uh, I believe is still going today. Um, so I'll be digging in here and trying to learn a little bit about uh, what's going on there. So uh, I'll be back later, probably <laughs> a lot later. To, uh, to give you a report on this one. So that's what I have now. There are a few more over there on the shelf that are just gonna have to wait. I mean, this is a beast, but I feel like this is my next one that I need to tackle because of where I am and my, my interests. Um, I got one on free jazz and one on improvisation that uh, both Anders and Mike Johnson have recommended um, another general jazz book a Miles Davis book and a Coltrane book um, on deck, but uh, this one will be my next one. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you've lasted this long, uh, good books for you. So, go out and grab some books to read. <laughs> Take care, folks, and uh, leave some comments. I'll be I'll be happy to talk more about these books uh, if you're interested. So, take care, everyone. Bye bye.